Perhaps everyone has heard at least once from his family that instead of going to the gym again, it would be much better to do some work in the garden. In their mind, this form of activity can effectively replace strength training. The reason why we take these words with a pinch of salt is that the gyms are more likely to be the ones that good-looking and strong guys come out of. Although men who work physically deserve great respect, in general, their figures are far from beach ready. The reason for this is usually excessive body fat. Therefore, I would mostly blame the failure to maintain a diet here. At the gym, we deal with the controlled effort and clearly defined volume. In addition, we often use partitioning and isolate individual muscle groups. It can be said that we choose training parameters with mathematical precision so as to build muscle mass in an optimal way. On the other hand, when working on a construction site, we can't predict how much we will do, what will be there to move, and how. By moving heavy objects, bending over, digging with a shovel, and constantly changing positions, we are attacking our entire body. This distinguishes two different methods of muscle loading. In training, it is a short, high-intensity effort, usually followed by several days of recovery. In physical labor, we usually perform low-intensity but repetitive activities that last many hours. On top of that, instead of giving ourselves time to rest, we return to work again the next day. Nevertheless, it is also possible to build muscle mass this way. On TikTok, I came across a great example of a person who has an excellent physique without doing traditional exercises. His name is Kafumba Bamba, and he works on excavations. He is incredibly ripped and muscular. Each of his parts is well developed. As long as he has been running his profile, he has kept his body fat level within 10%. It's easier to have such a physique during long hours of physical work because we use a lot of energy. On the other hand, a deficit of calories and protein is not a healthy environment for building muscle. I suppose Kafumba eats intuitively, but he manages to provide an energy around zero calories. As a result, he is able to walk around sculpted while maintaining mass. It turns out that he is not an isolated case. An article has appeared online about workers from Cameroon who are extracting sand from the bottom of a river. In the photos, some of them even have more muscle mass than the Kafumba discussed a moment ago. The secret to their above average physiques is a training method called Nucleus Overload. It is claimed to be created by YouTuber Team 3D Alpha. He developed it based on observations of people who have built a notable body by training at a very high frequency. It is designed to maximize the activity of satellite cells in the muscles. These allow new cell nuclei to form. As muscles grow, more nuclei are needed for optimal protein synthesis and further hypertrophy. Thus, when we accumulate these in advance, the subsequent gains in theory can be much larger and faster. This can be related to the principle of muscle memory. Although muscles lose size after a prolonged period of detraining, the accumulated cell nuclei remain. As a result, buildups after returning to exercise are much faster in the author's original program. The idea is to train a particular muscle group every day for four weeks at high volume and moderate intensity. This is followed by a seven-day break, which is designed to increase sensitivity to enzymes involved in protein synthesis. In fact, their activity decreases after a prolonged period of frequent exercise. The scientific literature on the concept of nucleus overload is very limited. In one of the studies, similar training methods were used. It focused on the effects of exercise with reduced blood circulation on stem cell proliferation. It also tested how this would translate into the number of accumulated cell nuclei. A very high frequency of workouts up to twice a day for three weeks was used. They performed four series of knee extensions to muscle collapse with a load of 20% of the maximum weight. Indeed, after the study period, the number of cell nuclei relative to the size of the muscle fibers increased significantly. Another study was performed on rats. By damaging the synergistic muscles, their load on the finger extensor was increased. As a result, there was an increase in the number of cell nuclei after six days, and only after nine significant increases in muscle size were observed. This is consistent with the theory proposed by Team 3D Alpha, in which hypertrophy would be the result of earlier accumulation of nuclei. Unfortunately, the scientific literature in this area ends with the studies cited. 
The first one was performed on people, but the result could have been the outcome of limited blood circulation. This is evidenced by the fact that in the control group, which carried out a similar set of exercises, no significant effect was noticed. Moreover, the study was performed on untrained individuals. An additional factor may come into play in the form of adaptation to a new stimulus. The effects may differ in individuals who have experience with training. Of course, this is not the only way to increase the number of cell nuclei in the muscles. The body will produce them anyway when the extra amount is required for further gains. One meta-analysis indicates that an increase in their supply occurs when the muscle increases in size by at least 10%. So far, the amount of available data is far too small to be able to say anything about the effectiveness of nucleus overload. Based on anecdotal evidence, it is also difficult to point to an advantage of this program over a classical training plan. Although the African workers cited as an example have good-looking physiques, they don't have great size. The effects of training a particular muscle every day are questionable, and with this approach you have to expect a high risk of injury. Team 3D Alpha recommends training very close to muscle decline. By training a particular part every day for a month and not giving it time to recover, you get a ready recipe for injury. The effects you can get this way I would compare to the build-ups experienced by any beginner. Using the example of Africans, I assume that each of them started working as an untrained person. Their job is to carry heavy buckets of sand. Starting such work was a large percentage of maximum weight for them. Doing this repeatedly throughout the day, they applied a very high volume. Thus, we can talk about a specific workout that is sufficient to induce hypertrophy in beginners. My guess is that they gain strength. They progress naturally, doing more work per day at a faster and faster pace. By repeating such physical activity for several years, it's no surprise that they built a decent amount of muscle mass. Surely they would still be able to add to it, but over time the weights they lift have become too small to continue to cause progression. Certainly good genetics played a big role. Black people have a great predisposition to build muscle. According to research, they have a favorable proportion of fast twitch fibers, which are particularly prone to hypertrophy. This is why so many top sprinters are black. The effect we see on Kafumba Bamba's TikTok is a result of an excellent predisposition, very low levels of body fat, and muscles built by training suboptimally for hypertrophy. Is this what a 54-year-old natural looks like? Mike O'Hearn is a unique individual who knows how to combine muscle building with strength results. He was able to outclass his competitors during a powerlifting competition and then, a few weeks later, do the same on the bodybuilding scene while being cut to the bone. He is impressive with the quality of his physique and he breaks his own records. Check out the suggested video where I discuss his story and ponder whether he is a natural.